just I'm recording the session. Okay, so today's topic is business intelligence, and I'll be covering uh, two days for that one. And this is very much important for theoretical purpose. No practical, no hands-on on that one. Just try understand what is this, what is the topic about. And if there is any stuck point, kindly stop me and ask me questions. Okay. So in, so in a small form, it is also called BI. Okay. Business intelligence, that is BI. So what it's actually do, each of the industry we are having, suppose we are having an industry of, I mean, uh, a production. And over here, we are just uh, selling our production into multiple outlets okay now if that particular company owner okay they want to check different parameter about their growth or their revenues and all then how to do that thing they need to collect all the sales data from different outlets okay this is the thing sales data sales data sales data those are different outlets actually and they're keeping everything and process the thing by BI application. Okay. And after uh, the processing has been done, then some charts and graphs are prepared on top of the data. And over here you can see, uh, those are the charts and graphs and user can find these important aspects. Sales in the previous quarter, revenue growth, they can see the uh, particular growth of uh, the, the particular, I mean, the particular revenues for last five years. They can read the slope. Based on the slope, they can identify what should be their next uh, revenue as well. They can forecast something over here. Best selling product, worst selling product. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, high accent. So, I mean, that is why business intelligence is required. And over here in BI application, data engineers are working to collect this information from, I mean, those are the raw data. From the raw data, user cannot see this kind of operation or this kind of activity. They cannot find it. But the data engineers, they can convert the raw data into meaningful data in BI application itself. And after that, user can check it on top of meaningful data. So that is why data engineers are nowadays required. Okay, there are Java developers, there are .NET developers, they are building some, uh, suppose they are building what thing? So uh, over here, sales transaction is there. So whatever salesman or whatever, in the billing section, whatever uh, particular person is there, they are filling some form based on, I mean, maybe customer details, uh, the inputs they are providing, maybe this is based on Java, okay? So Java is, I mean, uh, there is JavaScript and all in web page. They are putting all the information over there. And when they're clicking on submit, the things, the sales data are, uh, I mean, picking from there and pushing into, a raw database maybe it's a, the raw database maybe a sql server or anything based on the customer's information the particular information can be inserted in a particular database but those are raw data user cannot determine anything on top of raw data then the business intelligence will be coming and data engineers will be working inside the business application okay moving ahead to the next slide then you can have some more understanding. Yes. So OLTP system. OLTP system means the raw database. Whatever data I'm receiving from there, it's a raw database. After that, the green color thing is ETL. ETL means extract transform load. I'll be coming to this point tomorrow with more details. So what ETL do, uh, it will take data from the raw and it will be pushing data into data warehouse okay in data warehouse we are storing the meaningful data only okay so the entire thing can be done by etl 
extract transform load we are extracting the data from the source system we are transforming the data based on the business logic suppose we are receiving data in usd dollar for some of i mean the amount part the, the billing part but the local currency is something else so you need to convert the thing into local currency and pushing it to data warehouse okay load is the last part load means loading data in the target tables okay so when our meaningful data is ready at the data warehouse or data mart rather we can say then there are another sets of engineers that they, they are also called visualization engineer they also comes under data engineers itself okay so they worked on top of some tools just like tab view click sense click view cognos those are some important tool even uh, in microsoft there are power bi hope you have already learned it or maybe uh, you have uh, i mean some idea on top of that one as well so on top of tables those data warehouse tables the visualization engineer will build charts and graphs and lots of dashboards over there and checking on the dashboard the decision maker decision maker should be from business side they can take the decisions and change the strategy over here so it's a closed loop they change the strategy which can be reflected in the next day's oltp system okay just i'm giving an example that kind of example i used to give to everyone uh, suppose uh, in a from a chart and graphs uh, the decision owners can check or the business can check a particular outlet is having below performance okay so compared to other outlet so they want to they they are checking why it's below performance they can find a culprit that a particular product is never been sold there are lots of stock over there but the product is never been sold in that particular outlet okay they need to analyze why the product is not sold based on the customer's choice and they also need to check whether there is any high selling product i mean this product is high selling in any other outlets as well okay so they can transfer this product to this outlet to have more sold more sell on top of that or they can they can check whether the particular product is really important or customers are not using it then they will tell the production house or maybe where the things are in the plant where the things are getting produced they can tell or they can instruct not to build any much i mean any more product on top of this brand or just like this okay so uh, based on their decision or strategy it should be reflected in the oltp maybe not the same day the next day so when the things has been uh, coming for the next day's oltp system into reporting we can see or we can visualize the things has been improved a lot in this charts and graphs okay so the bi this is called bi cycle business intelligence cycle and this is a closed one and uh, yeah actually we all need to know if we are working as a data engineers what should be the overview or overview of everything so this is the cycle so we need to know what is maybe when we are joining in a new company we do not have all the insights at a single glance so there maybe we are working in a etl developer maybe we are working in a reporting developer okay so we are not sure exactly uh, but a small portion can be given to us but if we integrate all the things then it should be looking like in this picture okay moving ahead with the next topic okay so what is oltp what is olap i already mentioned oltp over here okay so oltp is online transaction processing system so just like uh, the, the particular whatever raw data we are receiving okay we are storing it to oltp system we have an example over here just like bank transaction in the bank transaction there is lots of credit debit lots of application should be received or transaction can be made daily basis okay so those transaction can be stored in oltp sales transaction in a retail store i already told you railway booking system booking and cancellation this kind of systems those are been stored in oltp so the raw data for each of the aspects or each of the business industry 
those are stored in OLTP first. It's a transactional processing system. Okay. And what is OLTP? To analyze the data, we are converting the data into, we are storing it to data warehouse. And before going ahead with the reporting part, we are converting the thing in OLAP. It's online analytical processing system. So uh, to make the decision or to make anything, we need to put some analytics on top of data. Okay. And we are storing the data in OLAP system. That is called analytical processing system. Okay. So the, the transactions uh, and everything can be stored over there. And those are being used for reporting, report generation purpose. Okay. Yeah. And the next topic is on top of decision support system. Uh, so it's from the business side generally. Business means uh, suppose you are working for a client. So they can put that particular employee for client. Okay. And that should not be any other vendor they are used to put because they need to take the decision and it, it's their business. So they need to take proper decision and then they need to check this kind of questions from the dashboards. The end users, they, they, we can also tell them as the end users and they can take the decisions as well, which can be reflected in the next is OLTP data. Okay, so these kind of questions can become at their mind. How did my revenue improve in my last five years? Okay, which channel cost me more than pays less? So these kind of questions. How can promotions be better targeted for greater leverage? So these questions are always in their mind. Maybe they have done MBA and all and they are working in the business side of the particular company. So they need to, they are having these kind of questions in their mind all the time. And we have suitable charts and graphs in our reporting side. So based on these charts and graphs and reporting side, the business need to take decisions. Okay. But the system is called, this system is called decision support system. I just provide a small example. Suppose we are receiving the OLTP data in this manner, in the upper manner. Showing the data, it's not easy for a decision owner, what to take the decision and all. Okay, but if we convert it to meaningful one and prepare the charts and graphs and all, okay? So if that is visible to the end user and the business owner, they can check it and take easy decisions, okay? So the conversion of the OLTP to the final charts and graphs, it's the responsibility of the data engineers. Okay, if we do not have DSS, then this kind of thing should be happened. Data is spread across the organization, but it's not easy to pick the current, uh, I mean, uh, the questions and those answers that I showed you earlier. Delays and hardship to access data, business users, users spend too much time on IT tasks such as analyzing the data, creating reports. Business users can do by their own, by pen, paper and everything, and it should take a lot of time. Okay. Okay, now the thing is data warehouse. I'm just coming to some more technical part. So first of all, in the first screen, we have checked the OLTP and OLAP system in between there are ETL part. Okay, but this is not so much easy. Only two building blocks are not there. Actually, I'm just coming to this point with more deeper knowledge. So first of all, this is the source system, data entry operator, you can see. So data entry operator, they are inputting some data. Okay. And the transaction is happening daily basis or hourly basis. They are inserting the data and the data is getting stored in operational database. Okay. So that is called OLTP, the transactional operational data. It's here. After that, by ETL tool, that is extract, transform, and load. So we need to create jobs. The job should be running maybe each day or hourly based on the frequency of data refresh at the source system. Okay. And how much the data is critical? I mean, based on the business owner or decision makers, uh, how much the thing is critical? Checking on that thing. Uh, the refresh side from the source system to this data warehouse. 
is happened and that can be done by this etl jobs in between okay now why we will be learning python because python will be using as a etl tool okay because our database is ready maybe the source database we can use as mysql database in target we can use a separate database or even mysql itself with a separate database inside mysql okay but uh, the thing is the entire process can be done the loading system from source to target can be done by this etl jobs when the etl job is ready we need to refresh the job or the job has been scheduled by some scheduler daily basis or hourly basis and the new data from this oltp system can be reflected after the job refresh at the target site okay so after that it should be again prepared i mean on top of this data warehouse report should be present report means that data warehouse i mean that charts graphs dashboards and all okay and it should be produced in front of manager manager can check it and take easy decisions on top of that any doubt till now whatever we have learned any doubt from anyone okay cool okay so data warehouse so what is data warehouse that olp system before storing into olp system i mean we are storing the data from oltp to data warehouse okay the data warehouse should be i mean this kind of property should be with the data warehouse data is obviously it should be a database nothing else okay so in the database we are creating the tables and all so this kind of thing should be there in the data warehouse itself but we are collecting all the information maybe we have thousand outlets for our brand or product okay in i mean for entire world or just like this so we are collecting all the information uh, from different uh, i mean different outlets and we are storing the thing with the help of etl we are storing it in the data warehouse okay but a single data warehouse should be subject oriented a particular subject i mean uh, in a single data warehouse we cannot include or uh, integrate multiple subject areas so a single subject area should be contained by a single data warehouse the data should be integrated in nature it's time variant so that we can see the historical data as well there i mean we, we can archive the old data because to check the sales growth okay suppose 10 days ago we have also faced a pandemic situation so we i mean business owner wants to check the data how we handled it at that time okay and so the same strategy can be followed or some of the strategy can be followed uh, in this pandemic so 10 or 20 days there was a pandemic based on the scenario of whatever we have done so the business strategy wants to take the same decision in this year so they can check it from the data warehouse so that's why it's time variant non-volatile it cannot be erased because this is very much important for the business so it should be non-volatile in nature okay if there is any stuck point at any phases you can quickly ask me okay so this is data warehouse architecture how it's actually looking so the source system i already mentioned but to i mean by the etl process etl etl is not a single process actually we are putting one arrow over there but there are three i mean two three layers inside the etl the first layer they are taking the source systems data there are various source system n number of source systems are there they're extracting the data from there and keeping everything in the staging area okay so this is the first layer of a etl job and for, then this is the extraction process we can also tell it over here after that we are cleansing it transforming it and putting some aggregation based on the business requirement and this should be coming under transform t this is e this is t okay we are storing data maybe in ods and load i mean et and l the loading part is done in ods or data warehouse and rather you can say also data marts it's the miniature of data warehouse i'll be coming what is data mart and data warehouse so everything is been for olap analysis only we're storing data over here 
for OLAP analysis. Okay. So this is the entire architecture over here. I mean the ETL steps, various ETL steps are there. Okay, there is one more thing. What is operational data stores and what is data marts? Yeah, we learned already what is data warehouse over here. But the two new things are coming ODS, operational data store and data marts. It's almost same as data warehouse because everything is being used as a OLAP analysis. But a bit difference, <coughs> ODS is already having, I mean, it's a real time data. So the data refresh is very frequent. Generally, if we have some insurance operation or pharma pharmaceutical operation, whatever data is we are keeping I and mean, taking today from the source system itself. So maybe today we have the transaction. Okay. So whatever transaction we are making, it's been stored in OL OLTP system. And at the night time when the transaction is over, the ETL jobs are run. So the previous day's data can be reflected in OLAP system. Okay, but this is not a real time data, but ODA should be real time data. We can, it's almost same, whatever the thing is there at the source system, it should be capturing at the target system too. Okay, so ODS contains the uh, real life data to solve day to day problems and all. And the data mart, data mart is just a miniature of data warehouse. So in data warehouse, based on the different, I um, mean, sub, sub subject area, we can tell. Okay, suppose uh, we have banking related transaction, a data warehouse is being created for this thing. So in the banking related transaction, there are some debits counter. So they're collecting all the debit related transaction. There are credit related information or transaction is also there. So we are keeping two separate data marks called debit and credit for two sub operation okay so uh, just like our example is already given a data mart is a simple form of a data warehouse that is focused on a single subject area or functional area such as sales finance marketing so each of the individual things you should be having one data mart splitting from the data warehouse Okay, but everything, data house, data mart, ODS, they should be inside a particular database only. The database we have learned just like MySQL, it can be there as well. So based on which particular database they want to choose to represent their data mart or ODS or data warehouse, the, when, uh, the particular client should take the decision. Okay. Moving on to the next topic. Again, I just uh, have a pictorial diagram. I mean, today I've put a lot of pictorial diagram, but that is for sake of your, uh, I mean, uh, knowledge and all. So just like this, we have insurance or LTP databases. Okay. And we are just storing it. I mean, those are ETL jobs and all, but various layers are also present over there. Uh, the first arrow is property insurance data. Second one is automobile insurance data. Third one is commercial insurance data. Each of the line or pipeline, rather we can say, it's storing the data into separate data mart. Property data mart, automobile job will run and it will store the data in automobile data mart. And the same for commercial as well. So when the data mart is ready, the OLAP analysis should be there and the reports will be created over here. And the reports can be viewed by the executives. Okay. Okay. Now, one more important thing. Today, is, this is the last topic actually, fact and dimension. So, whatever data is being loaded into data mart or data warehouse, that should be in tabular format. Okay. The same kind of table we are creating there with create statement, inserting data, by ETL job, we are not directly putting insert command there. Rather, the data can be pushed into table daily basis or hourly basis based on the criticality with the help of ETL tool only. <clears throat> we are not manually inserting the data. If the job is go live, we have created the table one time, but there are respective jobs to load the data from source system to target system. That means data mark daily basis. 
okay whatever table is there at the target system that is in data warehouse or data mart that can be segregated by two things one is fact other one is dimension so how to recognize what's are facts so uh, we have various fields inside the table correct or various columns rather we can say inside the tables so if the columns are if any of the columns can help us with answering how much how many this kind of questions in in uh, accordance to answer whatever answer we are receiving that is a fact or measure you can say anything okay uh, just like i have an example over here fact and measure are the same thing uh, suppose revenue cost billing amount number of accounts those kind of stuffs are fact in nature those are helping us just like how much revenue how much cost is this how many number of accounts do you have for your company so those are all how much how many returning us the fact value okay and if we store this fact value in a table the table is called fact table okay i think it's clear what is fact table but you can see i mean over here two examples are there sales and billing table both of them are fact table because we are generally store the storing the numerical value over here apart from that the red color highlighted things is the numerical thing and this is the main fact but apart from that you can see some more columns are present in black color okay just like date key store key product key in the second table we have date key customer key service line key uh, red plan key but all of them you can see a key keyword is there that means those are the foreign key or maybe the primary key of that table okay so just to repeat once more time in the fact table the below things i mean not below things the highlighted things are original fact and apart from that whatever columns are there those can be the primary key or the foreign key of the same table okay there are lots of primary key because we will be joining the dimension table with those primary i mean those foreign keys i'll be coming to this thing later maybe in the next session while joining between the fact and dimension we are using some data modeling concept and, and all to face the data from different dimension to fact table okay that thing will be elaborating more on the next classes but today just learn what is fact table and what kind of data can be stored inside fact table okay hope that is clear i'm just moving to dimension table so uh, in a particular table or in a particular i mean whatever fields we are getting answer if we are just questioning who what when where so uh, in accordance to this answer we are getting the dimensions okay so dimensions are also called perspective over here just like fact is called measure and uh, dimension just like customer customer id or customer name what is time geography those kind of stuff are dimension okay we can store the same thing just like store and product those are two dimension table inside store table we are having the primary key store key and if we can remember in the fact table we have the foreign key store key over there so that we can join the fact and dimension at the end while creating the reports and graphs okay so we need to create the table such a way that the fact table should be having the foreign keys for all the dimensions okay maybe there are maybe multiple fact tables there may be multiple dimension obviously but maybe multiple fact tables are also there each of the fact table is handling each of the dimensions foreign key over there okay over here in dimension you can say uh, you can see store key is there and uh, based on the each of the store key of store name street address city state region country and all similar kind of thing is there in product key product key product id product name product group brand etc okay so the dimension tables they are storing especially the dimension value as well as the primary key of this dimension so these are the entire thing i believe uh, if there is anything yeah nothing is there so in the next session what we'll be learning just keep remembering what is fact and what is dimension we are inside in data warehouse okay we are storing data from source system and while storing the data 
into the data warehouse we need to segregate the thing what is fact and dimension fact should be entered in fact table and dimension should be entered in various dimension table generally fact table numbers are very less rather than dimensions okay and at the end we will be joining between and we have the relation between fact and dimension and that's so we can create a data modeling so what is data modeling how important it is so that thing will be covering in the next day just keep remembering what is fact and dimension okay okay that's all for today let's connect on monday for uh, some more experience or more insight on top of business intelligence okay thanks everyone thanks a lot for joining the session bye bye have a great day and have a great weekend too